The planet Earth is blessed with about 10,000 species of birds. These can be found from the poles to the equatorial forests, from the deserts to the centers of the oceans, from the highest mountains to the hearts of the cities. A total of 1,850 species of these birds reside in Africa, out of which 950 species can be found in Nigeria. Birds are essential members to the ecosystem as they play a vital role in controlling the pests, acting as pollinators and maintaining island ecology. They are also an integral part of the food chain. In the last few decades, there has been a gradual decline in the population of birds around the world and this is largely due to human factors such as farming, drainage construction, human settlement, traditional medicine and trade, among other things that have altered a lot of habitats and a sharp decline in bird population. According to the International Union for Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources IUCN, there is a significant drop in bird population and one of the species that is critically endangered is the hooded vulture. What kind of bird is the hooded vulture? And why is this species critically endangered? Vultures are a characteristic, distinctive and spectacular component of the biodiversity of the environments they inhabit known as nature's sanitary keepers. They provide critically important ecosystem services by cleaning up carcasses and other organic waste in the environment. This translates into significant economic benefits. Studies have shown that in areas where there are no vultures, carcasses take up to three or four times longer to decompose. This has huge ramifications for the spread of diseases in both wild and domesticated animals, as well as elevating pathogenic risks to humans. I've been working on vulture for the past four years, and I have a lot to say about vulture. And um, one very good thing nature has done for humanity is um, the creation of this species. Who did vulture? like we have around here in Southwest Nigeria, has been of great importance to humanity and the natural environment. They are the best nature cleaning agents. When I say cleaning agents, they help in uh, sanitizing the environment. Vultures are scavenger and they eat anything dead. And by so doing, they help us in keeping the environment clean, getting rid of um, carcasses that can serve as disease-carrying um, agents in the environment. So vulture help us in cleaning the environment. And this is just one of the great importance that distinguish um, vulture from other species or other scavengers that we have around here. About two years ago, I was approached by the Nigerian Conservation Foundation to be the brand ambassador for the Save Vultures campaign. And I have to say honestly that until I joined that um, ambassadorship and got that platform, I didn't really know a lot about vultures and the important role that they play in our ecosystem. And I found out that, you know, they are the cleanup crew, as I call them in my book, that the sanitation officers, without um, vultures, we, our environment will, will, will be ridden with diseases and plagues. And so um, in the two years, I realized that most of the time when we have this talk about conservation, we sort of leave the children out because the topics are sometimes really technical. We use these big words. And I wanted the children to be part of this conversation and understand it because if we really want to you know, change the way people think is very important to start with the young children because they are the next generation and once they have the right information they will go on and you know do good and so i wrote this book vultures to the rescue the cleanup crew it was just a fun way of introducing vultures to children and making them understand their importance in our environment research shows 
that from the millions of individual birds a little over a decade ago, the population has dropped to a few hundred. The hooded vulture, Necrocytis monachus, is one of such vultures facing massive population decline. It is native to sub-Saharan Africa, with a widespread distribution across southern, east and west Africa. Largely sedentary, it is often associated with human settlements, but is also found in urban grassland, forest edge and wooded savanna. Mainly an obligate scavenger, feeding mostly on carcasses of dead animals, they may also congregate at slaughterhouse disposal sites and rubbish dumps in urban areas to forage. In West Africa, breeding takes place throughout the year, most especially from September to July. It is an arboreal nester, usually laying a clutch of one egg. Adoawai, a town in Oyo State, southwest Nigeria, is blessed with Ado Hill that rises 433 meters above sea level and is rich in history and culture. Okay, the top of Ado Hill has been a home to the hooded vulture species over the years, and presently, the absence of these birds, along with their empty nests at the top of the hill, greatly supports the claims of the IUCN that the hooded vulture is greatly endangered. Especially the hooded vulture is one of the most heavily traded bird species in Nigeria, as well as in other West and East African countries, with an estimated 5,850 to 8,772 individual birds traded over a six-year period in West Africa. Trafficking of vulture parts has become a very lucrative trade. Findings across local markets have revealed that the head is the most expensive part, costing up to 25,000 naira, while the feathers and other parts are sold for less. Many locals and traditionalists hold beliefs that these parts can be used to communicate with the dead or to appease the gods in elaborate sacrificial ceremonies. Humans now use vulture meat as food. Traditional Aba healers or traditional medicine sellers believe that there is no part of hooded vulture that is, is not useful when it comes to making um, traditional medicine. And so everything as far as hooded vulture is concerned, down to the excreta, the fecal droppings, of hooded vulture is money. And when we're talking about money, we're not just talking about hundreds, we're talking about thousands. A teaspoon of um, the excreta, the fecal dropping, as at 2018, 2019, sells in the market between 2,500 and 3,000 era. Just a teaspoon. Not to talk about the head or the heart or any other uh, body part. <laughs> The hooded vulture is also one of the most revered birds in the mythology of the Yoruba speaking peoples of southwest Nigeria. It is a long held traditional belief that the sacred bird should not be used as a burnt offering or as game or for food. Ninu wase ati ninu awon gbolohun 
ta wa gbo lodo awon agbalagba won ni a kin jegun eyin o de kin fi gun bori but tin o ba tun resi waju ninu awon baba lawo to ba gbo fa agbo ku won lo igun o de ni awon oja bi tun won tin ta sugbon lati gba temi ti wonu lo i tori mo jo mo bibi lo i mi o ri o ko soja kan ko ton tin ta gun bi one of the things that i find so profound and that i respect so much is that our forefathers understood the importance of vultures to the point that I would say they revered them. That they had this saying, that's in the Yoruba culture, we do not kill vultures, we do not eat vultures, and we do not use vulture for sacrifice. And I felt that was so important for the Nigerian child to understand that this was something that was local to them. And I put it in the book, I mean, you'll find it in the book. I put it out so that, you know, we send that message of the importance of vultures in our environment. This was an age-long ethno-ornithological culture that once had a strong positive effect in vulture biodiversity management and aided in making the vulture populations to soar in the 1960s. But that culture has long been eroded, as hooded vulture meat is reportedly sold as chicken in some places in southwest Nigeria. Hey, <laughs> bi omo de ta ba gbalagba kan ti ara re o ba ya to ba lo pe awon baba wa ti je bi awon baba lawo nkan ke to ba di ko o se tutu pe enikan ni o gbadu tabi nkan ke nse laarin ilu to ba ni ko o se tutu la la o tutu mi me ti won ba se ti o ye ko mo kekere mi foju kan to ba ti nbe kan laarin se jimarun awon guma je e ni rimo ni igba yen o tori ko si mo nisin ni igba yen won ri lu dada fun nkan ti won ba fe fi se bi awon ni se awon ni se gun won ri lo ti se yen na de nje to to down dada amon ni sin gbugbu awon asa ti se yen ti a wa se mo yen won lo fa ti gbugbu awon igun yen ti won fi se nuri oke deforestation largely due to bush burning is a major factor in the population decline of the hooded vulture the strong trees that can hold the nests of this species of bird are being burnt down and according to BirdLife International, poisoning is also a major threat to the population of hooded vulture. It could either be intentional or unintentional, where other animals which the species feed on are poisoned. Poachers trying to cover their tracks during illegal hunting raids also intentionally poison them. Carcasses of large mammals such as elephants and buffalo are laced with poison to reduce the number of vultures in these areas. The scavengers descend on the poisoned carcasses, thereby resulting in high mortality. Human activities alone is enough to reduce the population of this wooded vulture. Anthropogenic activity destroying their, their, their habitat, women have encroached into their habitat. In Africa, we have lots of wild game. People want the elephant tusks. What happens is that um, when poachers kill an animal, it's just natural that the vultures will come down to feast on a dead um, animal. And to prevent that, these poachers uh, would normally put medicine on this an, um, the elephant. And before you know it, when the vultures feed on it, they're affected by it and they die. Um, there's this particular one in India, one of the reasons why um, vultures in India are actually extinct is because there's a use of a drug called diclofenac which when they're used for um, animals, regular other animals, when they die, when the vultures feast on those animals who have dic diclofenac within them, it kills the vultures. The hooded vulture also faces direct persecution arising from myths and superstitious beliefs, often stereotyped for maliciousness and witchcraft. There is a general but rather erroneous belief that they are evil birds, and this is largely due to their appearance and feeding behavior. They are viewed as unclean and signs of a bad omen. 
Other anthropogenic factors militating against their survival include habitat loss, degradation and land use changes. Increasing grazing pressure and human populations could have an impact on food and nesting sites availability. <laughs> Wooded vulture have been known to be very close to human habitation and that's the reason why you, you hardly find them in the core forest zone. They come to the human um, habitat to feed. Definitely they believe that human will eat, will kill animals and some of these remnants they come to feed on. Now, some believe that once you see wooded vulture maybe perching on their roof, you see them start speaking in tongues. You see them start looking for their affairs, looking for their abalis that maybe is a sign of uh, a kind of impending um, danger to them. Not knowing that this species are just doing their own work, walking about doing what God has sent them to do. What's really important for me and that I try to push with this book is that I would like to change the perception you know, of how we see vultures, especially our children. Growing up and um, with many children today, the first thing they hear about vultures is they are ugly, they are scary. And I use this book to um, introduce the vulture in a child-friendly, relatable way. So we talked about the hooded vulture here, and in my book I says, hi, I'm a hooded vulture. I have a small patch of furry feathers on my head, just like your hooded sweaters. So I look for things that are um, fun for the children and are relatable with the children and describe the vultures as such. And for me, I feel then the child would come to love the vultures, would seek to know more about the vultures and then would do its best to protect the vultures. Towards the end of the book, there's a page where we have the pledge, where a child would say, I pledge to do, you know, so, so and so. They would come up with the words themselves to offer protection to the vultures because they understand how important it is to the environment and that they also have a duty in protecting vultures. Ideally, these species should never have been in this unfortunate state, but rather protect it due to the ecosystem services they offer. This is a state of emergency, and yet there remains a general apathy towards them how we treat the hooded vulture contravenes the endangered species law as well as the convention on trade in endangered species sites to which nigeria is signed strong advocacy programs that would raise awareness of their ecosystem values and the legality of hunting or trafficking these species would surely make a difference there is also the need for law enforcement agencies to clamp down on local markets where the sale of vultures and their parts is prevalent, as such practice contravenes Decree 11 of the 1985 Endangered Species Act. Proper penalty and prosecution of offenders would also serve as a deterrent to others. All necessary stakeholders must put suitable conservation strategies together in order to achieve the goal of preserving the remnants of the hooded vulture populations in Nigeria.